Hey there, Saki here from Saki Tech, and in today's video, we will be doing a full and complete comparison of the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus versus the iPhone 8 Plus. Just to put things in perspective, the iPhone 8 was released in September 2017, while the Galaxy S8 was released in March 2017. So we have a six month gap between the two. Apple and Samsung are the most popular smartphone makers in the world and as such are the biggest rivals. Inevitably, people are asking questions like, is the S8 Plus better than the iPhone 8 Plus or is the iPhone 8 Plus better than the S8 Plus? And of course, shall I get the S8 Plus or the iPhone 8 Plus? Just tell me which one is better. And of course, in this video, we will do a deep dive into every aspect of these smartphones and deliver a crystal clear answer for the viewer to determine which phone is better. Let's dive in and start with the build and design. iPhone 8 and the Galaxy S8 are both high quality smartphones built with premium materials. They take the exact same approach to build quality this time around. Both the Galaxy S8 and the iPhone 8 are constructed out of glass front and rear panels surrounded by a metal band around the perimeter of these smartphones. Unquestionably, both phones emanate a premium sensation when held in your hands. But the actual design is a different story altogether. The Galaxy S8 looks far superior to the iPhone 8. First and foremost, it retains the signature design element of having dual curved edges, which already produce a magnificent look. And secondly, there's no physical home button on the front, which allows a large and tall display to dominate the front. It looks stunning. Now, the iPhone 8 is not an ugly phone, but it cannot compete with the S8 in terms of overall style. It is a design that has been around for almost four years now. So although both the S8 and the iPhone 8 have an identical build quality, the win for design goes to the S8. As for water resistance, the iPhone 8 has an IP67 grade water resistance, while the S8 has a higher IP68 grade water resistance, giving the lead to the S8 as you can actually submerge this phone into water up to 1.5 meters for 30 minutes without any water damage. You can even record videos or take photos underwater if you wanted to. As for speakers, the iPhone 8 has two stereo speakers that are louder and produce a richer sound than the S8's single non-stereo speaker. Another thing that might be important to some but not all is that the S8 retains the 3.5mm headphone jack and of course the iPhone 8 ships with a lightning to 3.5mm adapter just in case. Now both the iPhone 8 and S8 support Bluetooth 5.0 which is going to deliver better Bluetooth performance overall especially in terms of extended range, higher data transfer speeds via Bluetooth and the ability to add multiple wireless devices to these smartphones that could both be active simultaneously such as two wireless headphones. So in this category I would have to say that the S8 emerges with a lead due to its superior design and higher water resistance rating. Now the build quality is equally well done on both smartphones. Now let's move on to the processor, memory and RAM. The iPhone 8 sports a powerful Hexa Core A11 processor with three gigabytes of RAM and can be acquired with 64 gigabytes of storage for the base model or 256 gigabytes of storage. The Galaxy S8 also sports a powerful processor, an octa-core Snapdragon 835 CPU or an Exynos 8895 variant in the non-US markets with 4 GB of RAM. S8 will only be available in a 64 GB storage option, but you can easily add up to 256 GB of extra storage using a microSD card, a feature that the iPhone 8 lacks. So adding extra storage to the S8 is much cheaper. You can get a 128GB microSD card for around $50 and just load up on photos, videos and any media if desired. Now if you move on to the benchmarks, it is immediately clear that the iPhone 8 has quite a bit of raw horsepower that blows expectations. The Galaxy S8 Plus is not a slow phone by any means, but iPhone's A11 Bionic chip has accomplished some incredible power output which will possibly translate into great looking buttery smooth games and top level artificial reality experience that is available on the iPhone 8. Now in this category the numbers can't be ignored and hence the win does go to the iPhone 8 in terms of processing power. Let's talk about the dimensions. The S8 Plus measures 159.5 millimeters in height, 73.4 millimeters wide and 8.1 millimeters thick. It weighs 173 grams. The iPhone 8 Plus measures 
at 158.4 millimeters in height, 78.1 millimeters wide, and 7.5 millimeters thick. It weighs 202 grams. There's a slight difference in measurements. For instance, the iPhone 8 is certainly thinner, but the S8 is lighter and so on. Normally, I don't care about dimensions because a few grams of weight difference is nothing. But dimensions have become relevant in the sense that how smartphones use the total surface area. In this case, you clearly get a lot more screen with the S8 than the iPhone 8, despite the fact that they both have similar footprints. This brings me to the display. Let's talk about that. Both displays are stunning. The technology behind the iPhone 8 and Galaxy S8 displays have received some great reviews from experts at DisplayMate. However, the S8 Plus has some clear advantages. Let's look at the specs. The S8 Plus, which has just about the same footprint as the iPhone 8 Plus, has a large and tall 6.2 inch display that comes with a Quad HD Plus resolution and 529 pixels per inches. The screen to body ratio is approximately 85%. The iPhone 8 Plus has a 5.5 inch display, comes with full high definition resolution and 401 pixels per inches. The screen to body ratio is approximately 67%. So the S8 has a larger screen and a sharper display. This may not matter if you're just browsing the web, checking your email or reading a book, but when you start watching high definition movies, zooming into photos and so on, you will see a clear difference in how much more detail you get to see on the S8, delivered with vivid and vibrant colors. And I do have to emphasize that the S8 has a larger screen despite having similar dimensions to the iPhone 8. There is quite a feat to achieve and a great benefit because extra screen real estate is always welcome. And additionally, the S8 has HDR capabilities while the iPhone 8 does not have it. So in this category, the S8 has a clear lead. Now let's move on to the software. Let's start with the basics. The Galaxy S8 runs on the latest version of Android while the iPhone 8 runs on the latest version of iOS. When comparing iOS and Android, it's hard not to overlook two big differences. Number one is customization. Android system is a much more open-ended environment and allows for extensive customization via widgets, themes, and home screen tweaking. You can tweak an Android smartphone to fit your personal sense of style. iOS, on the other hand, when it comes to home screens, is just a static grid of app icons with very basic customization capabilities, such as being able to change your wallpaper. On the other hand, iOS does offer some more polished apps and greater gaming experience. Just about every game on the iPhone 8, including graphically demanding games, will run at maximum performance with smooth and lag-free gameplay, a feat Galaxy S8 won't be able to match. Additionally, the Apple App Store yields a larger number of quality apps as opposed to the Google Play Store. So if you care about apps and games and how well they perform, this is certainly something to pay very close attention to. Beyond those two differences, S8 is certainly more productive and feature rich in the software department. It allows for split screen multitasking, which means you can run two windows side by side at the same time. And that larger display on the S8 certainly enhances the whole multitasking experience. The S8 also has the edge functionality. You can swipe inwards from the edges of the display to bring up the edge panels. These edge panels can give you access to app shortcuts, weather widgets, tools such as a compass or a digital ruler, a calculator, and much more. On top of that, it is fully customizable. You can actually add or remove a bunch of panels based on your needs. As a counterattack, the iPhone 8 does have 3D Touch, which is a pressure-sensitive screen that allows you to access quick actions and other gestures by pressing down on the screen with a certain amount of pressure with your finger. So it is clear from everything I mentioned that the Galaxy S8 is more customizable, feature-rich, and productive overall. However, where Apple wins is the app ecosystem, which is not a joke. Like I said, Apple App Store will offer superb gaming experience and provide more polished and quality apps in comparison to the Google Play Store. For app-driven people, this might be important enough to stick with Apple. Now let's move on to the camera. Let's get the numbers out of the way. The S8 Plus sports a 12 megapixel rear-facing camera with an aperture of f1.7. The iPhone 8 Plus is slightly different. It has a dual camera system. It has a regular wide-angle 12 megapixel camera with an aperture of f1.8 and a 12 megapixel telephoto camera with an aperture of f2.8. The primary reason the telephoto lens exists is to give you two things, two times optical zoom and the bokeh effect for portray shots. 
So which camera is better? It's hard to say. They both take razor sharp photos in daytime and have a great low light performance, meaning you can take photos at nighttime and actually get a clean photo without too much noise. If you are an average consumer, which most people are, you'll be satisfied with either one of these cameras. Now the iPhone 8 Plus does have the advantage of having a secondary camera, which allows for two times optical zoom and gives a special bokeh effect if desired. But regardless, both primary cameras on these phones produce excellent photos. Now what about video recording? Here's where the iPhone 8 actually surpasses because it has the option to record 4K videos at 60 frames per second or you can tone it down to 30 frames per second. Galaxy S8 can also record in 4K but only at 30 frames per second. Additionally, iPhone 8 is also capable of recording slow motion video at 1080p at 240 frames per second which is quite amazing. Galaxy S8 can record at 240 frames per second but only at 720p. So certainly in videography, the iPhone 8 outperforms. Finally, S8 has an 8 megapixel front facing camera while the iPhone 8 has a 7 megapixel front facing camera. Both cameras are great for useless selfies to overpopulate Instagram and also video conferencing. So what is the story with the camera? Let me repeat, if you're an average consumer, and most people are, you'll be satisfied with either one of these cameras because they take fantastic pictures. These are both world-class smartphone cameras. However, iPhone runs the advantage here due to its better video recording options. Again, whether or not an average consumer will use those options is up for debate. Now let's move on to the battery. I will tell you right off the bat that the iPhone 8 Plus has a longer battery life after a full charge. It will give you a couple hours of extra life in comparison to the S8 Plus. However, both phones are able to last a full day with a full charge with medium to heavy use. Both the iPhone 8 and the S8 offer wireless charging using the same Qi standard, which is fantastic. S8 has fast wired charging out of the box with the included charging adapter. However, the iPhone 8 will require you to purchase the fast charging compatible wall adapter if you wish to utilize the fast charging option. And that could become costly very quick. But both phones do have fast wired charging option built in. So the iPhone 8 leads in overall battery life, but the S8 gives faster wired charging cable included with your purchase. Both phones have wireless charging. Let's call this one a draw. In regards to biometrics and security, Galaxy S8 gives you more choices to unlock your phone than the iPhone 8. It has a fingerprint sensor, an iris scanner, and a facial recognition tool. The iPhone 8 only has a fingerprint sensor. Now, I'm not a fan of the fingerprint sensor placement on the rear of the S8, because I used to use it all the time and I really preferred it on the front of a smartphone so that I can unlock the phone even when it is laying flat on the table without having to pick it up. So for me, it is definitely more convenient to have it in the forefront for easier access. But this is a personal choice. As far as actual biometric security options are concerned, S8 has a bit of a lead, though it is wise to mention that the facial recognition is not secure, which makes it a joke because even a picture of your face can be used to unlock your phone. Therefore, I would say that in terms of usable options that are actually secure, the S8 has an iris scanner and a fingerprint sensor, while the iPhone 8 has a fingerprint sensor that has better placement. Now let's talk about colors and pricing and then move on to a conclusion. The S8 Plus comes in only one version, a 64 gigabyte model. The prices will range based on periodic sales from $650 to $850 with three color options, black, silver, and gray. In certain markets around the world, you can get it in gold or blue. The iPhone 8 Plus can be acquired in 64 gigabytes and 256 gigabyte models with respective prices of $799 and $849. You can get it in silver, gold, or space gray. Now let's move on to our conclusion. So what's the conclusion? It seems that both these smartphones have some common features. Let's see what these common features are. They both have a great build quality, glass front and back with a metal bend around the edges. They both have water resistance, however the S8 Plus has better water sealing at IP68. They both have great battery lives, yet the iPhone 8 leads slightly giving you an hour of extra juice. They both offer wireless charging. They both have great cameras, although the iPhone 8 has improved video recording options. So those are some of the common features, with slight variations. Now the S8 Plus takes a lead in display quality. It certainly has a stunning display that is large and tall, better in clarity, great for enjoying media, and capable of HDR. 
Its edge-to-edge -edge display styling with curved corners gives it a unique look in overall design. The S8 also has an iris scanner, which is a leap forward in smartphone tech. On the other hand, iPhone 8 Plus takes a lead in processing power. Just look at those Geekbench numbers. And they're not just for show. iPhone 8 does have some super good looking games that run as smooth as butter and is able to easily perform feats such as recording and editing 4K video in 60 frames per second. But the bottom line is that the S8 has a bit of a lead in overall attractiveness. It is better equipped technologically and it is the more modernized package. So the final verdict is that you should get the S8 over the iPhone 8. S8 is the better phone. However, there's one exception. The only time the iPhone 8 can be recommended over the S8 is if you are truly interested in the iPhone 8's superior app ecosystem. If you live and breathe apps, the iPhone 8 will do you better. Now make sure to drop comments, concerns, or questions down below. And also give this video a thumbs up and if you do use Twitter and Instagram, make sure to follow me on both at Saki Tech Online. And of course, do not forget to subscribe to Saki Tech for more videos to come. Have a fantastic day.